Hey guys, we're in our truck camper right now. I, we actually just got done with a really, really fun surfing session, but I am finishing up editing this video of all the work we did to our actual truck, specifically like under the hood. And in this video, we did the whole fuel system, lift pump and fuel filters and everything like that. We did a cold air intake and all the intake components, intake manifold, tubes, boots, stuff, stuff like that. We replaced our radiator, our water pump, our belt. We replaced our lights. We replaced our mirrors with tow mirrors. We upgraded our sway bar and we did a bunch more so stay tuned to see everything we did to the truck to get it ready in terms of maintenance repairs and upgrades to haul this truck camper plus the crafts that we're gonna be towing behind with us so i hope you guys like this one leave a comment make sure you're subscribed and thanks for watching so before we mount this flatbed permanently we're gonna take it off because we have to access the fuel tank underneath here because we are installing a whole new aftermarket fuel system we need to get into this fuel tank and take off the whole cap and inspect it and then put in a new bigger draw tube one two three All right, so here's the fuel tank right here. And here's the whole, I don't know what you call it on this tank, an inspection port maybe, but there's the draw and the return and then the fuel level sensor and maybe a vent or something. So you may be wondering why we're doing all this and ta taking off the inspection port and all the fittings to the fuel tank and what we're doing with the fuel system. And you need a little bit of background. This engine is a Cummins 5.9 liter 24 valve engine and the engine is just industrial it is one of the most sought after diesel diesel engines out there but it's got one big fault and that fault is that it comes with an electronically controlled injection pump it's called the vp44 injection pump the reason that so many of these engines or basically it's just the injection pump that fails is because that injection pump requires cool fuel to be running through it to cool down the electronic component of the injection pump. And if your stock lift pump fails, it stops pushing cool fuel to the injection pump and that injection pump quickly burns out and and then you're kind of stuck on the side of the road unless you get a new one. But basically what we're doing is installing a whole new aftermarket lift pump and fuel filter system so that it's super reliable, it's a lot of fuel flowing through that injection pump, just cooling it down, the rest of the fuel just gets returned back to the tank and then refilter. The filters are spin-on filters, so super easy to replace and it takes out all the water and air that's in the fuel and it's just gonna be a nice, solid, reliable uh, aftermarket fuel system so we don't have to worry about frying out our injection pump and being stuck on the side of the road, so. Here's what we got here. It's an Air Dog fuel system. And it's their Pure Flow Air Dog 2 4G fuel air separation and delivery system for this particular truck. Fuel pump comes preset so that it's delivering 15 to 17 PSI to the injection pump. Um, but you can you can adjust that and you could get it up to 75 PSI, um, which is a crazy amount. But for guys who like tune their trucks and put in big injectors and want maximum horsepower, they might tune it up to get maximum fuel delivery uh, to their engine. We've got some directions, some wiring, new fuel line. Here's the core of the system. The fuel pump up here. And then the two filters, the spin-on filters, should be super easy to replace when we have to replace them. Bracket to hold everything. Some extra components in here. It looks like maybe the draw tube, some fittings, some bolts, another bracket here. And uh, that's about it, some zip ties and O-rings. Cool, let's do it. All right, we have the pump and filter system hooked up to the bracket, and we're gonna hook this bracket directly to the frame of the truck. I gotta remount it on the bracket a couple holes lower because it's touching the underside of the body of the truck. Hey, Mo. 
Harley. Say hi to the camera. What you doing? This is Miley. Come over here now. Good girl. <laughs> I gotta get to work here, Miley. Alright. That's mounted up. All super nice and solid. Sweet. Let's see what's next. Well, accidentally put this thing on the wrong way. This side needs to go to the engine and then return. And then this side is supposed to be supplied from the tank. So I can either reroute the hoses or I could just, I think I can just swap this whole thing around and do a mirror image of it on the bracket here. And that's what I'm gonna try to do if I can. Ah, uh, but now I might have to make it even a little lower. Ah, dang. No big deal. Just gonna take some time. Alright, much better. That's how it's supposed to be. We'll probably fill these fuel filters up with diesel before we attempt to uh, prime this system. But just want to get them on there for now so everything's sealed up so it doesn't get all dirty, any bugs in there or something like that. I love those quick connect fittings. Alright, these are the last two fittings. One's for the supply from the tank to the whole system. That's this one here. And then this one's the return from the fuel filter pump assembly back to the tank. All right, this is the return. And this one's the supply. So now we have to take off this inspection port of the tank and kind of do some things in there, set up the new draw, draw line. Be pretty much good to go. Secure some, some wires and lines and uh, we'll be set. We got the electrical connection off, the fuel supply line from the tank, and the return line back to the tank. All the old ones, of course. Now let's see what we got. Here it is. Looks really good in there. I'm really impressed. Very clean. All right, check this out. I'm taking the, I don't know what you call it, tank housing apart. And here's a screen in the bottom of that tank housing and it is pretty gross. I spoke too soon. That's like all like rust and dirt and grime. Yuck, pretty nasty. Just getting this fuel module assembly back together with the new um, drawstring that came with the air dog kit. It's like a half inch instead of I don't know what the regular drawstring is, maybe three-eighths or something, quarter inch. Um, so a little more high flow fuel. We cleaned out the whole assembly. There's some good amount of gunk in there. Um, and we're just going to get this back on the tank and then finish up with this whole install. I know I'm not using the right tool for the job, but it's working, so leave me alone. You never have the right tools. You always make do, though. We got our whole fuel system hooked up, pretty much. We have the fuel suction side. I put some of this plastic just to protect it. This is the return line from the air dog unit directly back to the tank. And then this is the return line from the engine, from the inje injection pump back to the tank. And this is the old suction line. So all those lines are run pretty good. Now we got to work on the wiring it seems pretty straightforward we just have a relay a few plugs positive and negative uh, i think there's one more plug somewhere there it is nope fuse um here so we just got to connect everything up and run everything nice and neat and then we're good to go it's starting to rain but i really want to get this done so i got some diesel fuel from the gas station and we're gonna fill up this canister the directions say this this pump is self priming but they said it's a good idea to fill up this water separator just so that pump doesn't run dry for the first few seconds so that's what we'll do sorry we got rained out the other day but we have the pump all installed I just primed the system. I bumped the key 
and I took the fitting off at the injection port and I had it in a little bottle and as soon as I started seeing clean diesel fuel come out I plugged it right back in so the whole thing should be nice and purged of air and primed and it should be time to start the truck so let's start her up and see see how it is Yeah, cold air. in making this pretty you want to make it rugged yeah exactly rugged and freaking reliable these things never stop though mm -hmm. these, I know, it's these coming, motors so are solid you have to worry about everything else but the motor yeah, yeah exactly the truck yeah the truck, the truck will fall apart <laughs> around you <laughs> all right we're here at turtech motorsports and they're gonna help us out we're gonna get some suspension work done on my truck today actually pretty much replacing the whole suspension we have some nice Steam shocks, some coil springs, and some add a leaf springs. I also got some new beefier leaf springs to account for all the extra weight we're gonna be hauling with the camper. So we're still waiting on one of those. UPS apparently lost one in the mail, so hopefully that comes in soon. And then after we get the suspension done, we'll move over to the cooling system and yeah, get this thing nice and reliable and beefed up. And can't wait. Oh, yeah. Do it there, we'll just lift up. That's the real question. Oh, <laughs> Alright, steering stabilizer's off. Congratulations, Billy, the first coil you've ever installed. How do you feel? We oh, yeah. have a rough country steering stabilizer, adjustable sway bar links. This right here, this black bar right here is an adjustable track bar. And actually I have their steering brace already to help counter the wobble that comes with these trucks. Looking good, looking good. And for the rear suspension, we're replacing our leaf springs. Those are, those are our current leaf springs right now with super high load capacity just new leaf springs and then additional add a leaf so it'll make the rear lift like an inch higher or so and this will help account for all the extra weight we're going to have with the camper and everything like that and then the add a leaf will help just raise it that extra inch or so and hopefully with this heavy duty stuff it doesn't sag so much and our truck rides pretty level with that whole rig on it there 
So instead of going with like a super high-end aftermarket aluminum alternator, we just went with like one of the stock alternators and it was like a hundred and something bucks compared to like six or seven hundred bucks. Beautiful. While we're doing this whole cooling system, like I said before, we're going to be doing putting on a new belt, water pump, thermostat, and obviously the radiator. We're going to do something else, um, which is the whole in air intake system. As you guys already saw, we did a cold air intake because colder air is more dense and more efficient and keeps your whole engine cooler. It's got more power, if that makes sense. So cold air is always a good thing, and not just cold air, but air that can get efficiently to the engine. So if you guys don't know how turbo diesels work, turbos use the power of the exhaust through the engine to spin a turbine, and then it helps spin another turbine on the air intake side, and it helps pull and compress air to get as much air as possible into the engine. And that air gets hot as it goes through the turbo, so we have something called the intercooler that is kind of like the same concept as a radiator, outside air as we're driving, and the fan pushes air through it to cool that compressed turbo intake air as best as it can before it gets injected into the engine. After the intercooler goes through some pipes and then into the intake manifold, we want all those intake tubes and everything to have no leaks first of all because it's pressurized air and it leaks we're just going to lose that power um, that we really want into the engine. And we also want nice smooth radiuses as smooth as possible into the engine so that it's just the easiest path for the air to travel into the engine and that's gonna make it more efficient. This company, Pusher Intakes, uh, it's a local Florida company. They sent us a whole uh, kit of all the silicone boots that we need, a new intake manifold, which is much better than the stock intake manifold, which is all square and kind of cornery. This is a nice, smooth radius and nice smooth curve of an intake manifold. Whoa, yeah, look at that thing. Beautiful. So as you guys can see, like I'll show you on the other intake manifold, there's all corners, it's kind of squared off and stuff like this. This'll allow a nice smooth pathway for that compressed air to travel into the engine. Beautiful. All right, we got some silicone exhaust boots. They're um, nice heavy duty clamps, because obviously if those clamps start to go bad, they're gonna um, allow some leaks to form and we don't want that to happen. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Like I said, this company is right in Cocoa Beach, Florida. So if you guys are looking for any intake products, definitely check out uh, Pusher Intakes. I'll link to them right in the description. Here is the stock intake manifold. As you guys can see, it's all kind of squared off and cornery and whatever. I mean, it works fine for now, but I think the other one's going to be a big improvement in airflow and it's going to look a lot nicer. As I said earlier, some of the audio got messed up and here's one of those parts, but here's the new Fisher intake manifold and the tubes and silicone boots and here is one of the tubes off the turbo side. Um, everything came out really, really good and it was pretty easy to replace. Um, in addition to that, we put a new water pump on, we put a gate spelt on, a new thermostat right there, and that's all in addition to our new radiator that we're putting on right here. All right, we just filled up with coolant, we got the radiator in, we got all the pusher intake components on and the hoses. I think everything's back together. Water pumps in, thermostats in, coolant hoses are on. So we're gonna start the truck. I think we'll probably start it, have to let it run a little bit, work the air out of the system, and then probably top off the coolant. And then we should be good to go. So hopefully no leaks. There were no leaks as I was filling everything up. And hopefully it stays that way. All right, gonna start the truck, here we go. Well, the box got all wet. 
Anyway, today we are installing something called a sway bar. Luckily it's all metal, it doesn't really matter that it's all wet. And this is it. Ah, this is a Hellwig sway bar. So a sway bar, for you guys if you don't know, is something that, you know when you take a corner really fast and the inertia wants to like throw your body against the side of the car? Well, it does that with the body of the car as well. The inertia wants the body of the car to like get pushed off to the outside of the car and in response, the whole body of the car would want to kind of turn. That's called body roll. And if there was no sway bar, the outer suspension would compress and the inner suspension, the inside of the turn suspension, would extend and your whole body of your car would go like that. Like, depending on how fast you go, would depend on how much you wanted to do that. Now what a sway bar does is just prevent that. It's like a brace that when the outside of the car on the turn wants to go down and the inside of the turn on a car wants to go up, it just takes those two forces and connects them and they kind of counter each other out. So you get much less body roll than you would without a sway bar. Now, because we're gonna have this big old camper and a ton of extra weight on the bed of the truck, and especially because a lot of that weight is gonna be much higher than than normal, much, it's not gonna be down at the wheels, it's gonna be all up here. That body roll is gonna want to be exaggerated. So we're replacing the stock sway bar, which is this little, right there, that's the stock sway bar. And we're replacing it with this nice, beefy Hellwig sway bar. Cool, let's do it. bunch of hardware. These are the sway bar, what do you call them? Bushings, I guess? And then looks like just some brackets. Um, these are probably the end links, but they're adjustable based on where you put the hardware. And some more stuff, maybe some backings or something. All right, we finally got this sway bar on yesterday. It went pretty smooth and it's gonna just help prevent the whole truck and camper from rolling side to side when we take turns or do any off-roading or things like that. So I'm really happy we have it. Here, let me show you. All right, so we'll do a test. I'm just gonna rock the thing side to side and basically the whole bed and the axle and everything should move together. Without that sway bar, I'd be able to move this bed a lot more than the rest of the truck would move. So like you'd see the wheels and the axle stay relatively still while the whole bed went side to side. But right now you'll see me move the whole bed side to side, but everything will move together. So tell me how it looks. Can you tell like it's not rolling? It's just the whole thing is one piece, the whole back of the truck. So I'm just pressing down on this side, but it's pressing down on that side as well. Where I'm just pulling up on this side, and it's pulling up that side. Awesome. Right, yeah. Out with the old. Look at this. There's algae growing in here. That's all algae from there being fresh water in here. Oh my god. That's so funny. Ew, it smells. <laughs> And we can do. All right, we got new headlights, nice and bright. This one hasn't worked in a few years. We finally got new headlights. We're gonna be legal. We got some new hats and we're testing out to sell. We gotta make sure they're good enough for you all. So Billy's gonna put it to the test. Everybody say hi to mom and dad. <laughs> and thank you to them for letting us have this giant thing in the side of the yard for the past three months. Have you enjoyed the transformation? Yes, it looks fabulous. There we go. Beautiful. Way to go.